the, the, the piece was named Titus. Here again in Long Prairie, for the seminarians' annual visit after February the 2nd. Now we'll read only the gospel. We understand what the gospel is. Taking that according to St. Luke chapter 10. Nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Into whatsoever house thou you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they have, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Remove not from house to house, and into that city whatsoever thou enter, you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as they have set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. That's the other words of today's holy gospel. Women, fathers, and Holy Ghost, men, a few uh, considerations that are today the feast of St. Titus. St. Titus is one of the disciples of St. Paul, mentioned several times in the sacred scripture by St. Paul. And St. Paul says that, you know, that Titus is his beloved companion, and that he went to one place, Titus was not there, and he was discomforted, went to find him, and when working at laborers, was comforted by the coming of Titus. And Father Hannafin, an old priest, was raised around, as a child, says that, that, that there are two things to consider concerning our church and its priesthood. Two very important things. Our church is incarnational. Our church is God in flesh. Faith in flesh. Hope in flesh. Charity in flesh. All the things that are in God are in flesh inside of man. And these things will be made in flesh. So when God became man, he left himself on this earth, especially in his priests. He left himself on this earth in a very physical and perfect manner in the Blessed Sacrament. But how does Jesus Christ come into that sacrament? He takes a man, born of Adam and Eve, conceived of the original sin, Having only the power of the holy priesthood inside of him, he stands at the altar and he says, This is my body. This is my blood. And there is a great mystery. The body of Jesus Christ is necessary for this world to continue. And there can be no body of Jesus Christ unless a weak man who is not Jesus Christ, says, this is my body over a piece of bread made from wheat, over wine made from grapes. God is so willed that his faith, his word, his miracles, his infinite goodness cannot pass into this world without human flesh saying, this is my body, and in another place, what do we see? A weak man raises his hand and says, Ego te absolvo. I absolve you from your sins. When I was ordained a priest, put my hands before the bishop, and he anointed the hands. What these hands bless, it shall be blessed. What these hands consecrate, it shall be consecrated. And somehow, if these hands don't bless, there is no blessing. And if these hands don't consecrate, there is no consecration. And if this tongue does not say, this is my body, the body of Christ does not come into this world. When we say that our church is incarnational, it means more than God became a man 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel. 
and then he went up into heaven on the day of the ascension. It means more also than his presence in the Blessed Sacrament. For he has body and blood and soul and divinity inside of that Blessed Sacrament. He must be enfleshed in other ways in all the world. And the way in which he has enfleshed the world is through the priest. So St. Paul, he brought the faith to many. But one young man he brought the faith to was Titus. And Titus lived to be 94 years old. He had a very unusual conclusion of his life. Because he was at a time in which everyone was martyred. He was one of the very few saints of the first 300 years of our church who did not shed his blood for Christ. And yet he has always been recognized as a great saint of the early times of our church. What did he do to earn his sanctity? What did he do in order to be a great saint before God? He simply carried Christ with the fullness of his heart, with the fullness of his being to the ends of the earth. He was the true and greatest disciple of St. Paul. Very close to Paul, to the heart of St. Paul. The relationship between St. Paul and Titus, somewhat similar to David and Jonathan in earlier times. There must be priests. There must be priests in every generation to carry the word of God and priests cannot only become priests by simply being ordained. They can only become priests by simply reading the books of theology and studying the theological tests. But priests become priests by looking at, imitating, and learning from the priests that came before them. This is why it is a custom at ordination of the priesthood. When a young man is ordained, all priests are invited come to the ordination. And the bishop puts his hands upon the head of the young man to be ordained a priest and makes him priest. Christ's perfection goes in all directions. And the church sees that every priest must carry something of Christ in him and be a little bit of Christ. He is alter Christus, another Christ, but some priests have virtues that other priests do not. They have gifts that other priests do not, and not all priests are identical. Therefore, each priest lines up and puts his hands upon the head, because we are an incarnational physical church. And the Holy Ghost travels one place to another by our feet. That is why it says, Blessed are the feet of the preachers of the gospel of truth. We must carry Jesus Christ on our feet to the ends of the earth. And in the gospel today, St. Titus, who obeyed St. Paul, went from place to place by his beating, by his command. The church reads the command of Lord Jesus Christ, that the apostles go two by two. And they go from house to house. When they arrive in the house, they will say, Pax hui domui. Peace be unto this house. And if the people are of the right heart, the peace shall go out of the priest and into the home. But if the people are, are rejecting that peace, the peace shall return. Just a few weeks ago, actually a month ago, visiting, we love Satan, we love Satan, and he screamed, he shall not always be under this house. But God has will that his peace pass through the hands of the priests. That his peace pass through the tongue of the priest. It's a physical church. Then the second point that Father Hannafin used to always make. Notice St. Paul was comforted by Tyler priests. We are not meant to be alone. It is something like God, if we are imitators, we are supposed to be altar Christus, and Christ was never alone. He's always fulfilling the command of the Father, he is always sending the Holy Ghost. He is always in the circumcision of the Blessed Trinity. And he is traveling around with his twelve apostles. And he is going from place to place, always in the night and in the day, with his disciples in prayer and watching, or with his faithful, or with his Father and the Holy Ghost. 
There must be priests need other priests. There cannot be a total isolation. He was actually one of the points of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre in founding the Society of St. Pius X that there are many priests the devil is trying to isolate here and there that they might become discouraged. When I was in the seminary, a young priest, no older than 30 years old, came and visited. He didn't know what to do. He wanted to come back to tradition. But he was afraid of his bishop and afraid of the priest superior in his house. I spoke with him several times. He went back to his diocese in Virginia, near Washington, D.C., and he committed suicide. He felt completely alone. Priests need other priests. We see this in St. Paul, that he needed Titus. Even the hermit, St. Anthony, when he was about to die, or rather St. Paulus, the first hermit, when he was about to die, St. Anthony came to be with him. They would not be alone at his death. And he prayed before God, and St. Anthony was with him and buried him. We're an incarnational church. We must pour Christ inside of ourselves and put Christ inside of ourselves in order that he might be carried to the world. And he must be carried to the world. It takes a real man to say, this is my body. It takes a real man to say, I absolve you of your sins. Able to absolve him. And also, if you don't try to get to that man, what did Jesus Christ say? When God himself cured someone, go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourselves to the priests. Go show yourselves to the priests. In this way, humble yourself. In this way, come and get the blessings of God. One of the greatest evils of the Protestant rebellion, and the Protestant revolution, and the Protestant lie is that it has no priesthood in it. How can they fulfill the command of sacred scripture when God said, go show yourself to the priests? How can they fulfill the command of God when he said, what sins you priests shall forgive, they shall be forgiven them. What, priest, what sins you priests shall not forgive, shall retain, they shall be retained. He who hears you, hears me. He who despises you, despises me. An age like ours, we remind them at every age, but we must remind people at our age, the kingdom of God has come upon us. The kingdom of God has come upon us. The kingdom of God has come upon us. That's the third priest of God, Christ, which is the obstacle of sin. And why does he have this power? Because he says, hoc es enim carpus meum. He has authority in the command in the kingdom of God. He pastors a child. And pass down by the priests of all the last 2,000 years and take that through holy faith and pass it down to the next generation. I must be careful to be faithful to that deposit in my teaching and in my love and in my prayer and in my heart and in my actions. This is a great struggle for us. Hence, priests also must go to confession. Priests must also do penance. Priests must also recognize that they are weak they must try to get closer and closer to their priesthood. Closer and closer so that Jesus Christ is more and more in my flesh. More and more in my mind. More and more in my heart and in my passions and all things that I am. And remember the rule of St. Joseph of Asso, The disciple of St. John Bosco. Actually the director of St. John Bosco, but really his disciple. St. Joseph of Asso said, remember we priests. God made you priests to be fishermen. And fishermen are a layer. A fisherman is a layer of traps. That's what fishermen do. Everywhere you go, lay traps. Everywhere you go, be a fisherman. Lay traps so you might capture souls. Lay traps so you may pull them into the kingdom of God. Be zealous for the kingdom of God. And that was the greatness of Saint Titus. God let him live ninety-four years on this earth. When all of his compadres, they all died young and martyrs, and he wanted to be a martyr, but God said, "No, you're going to go a few more years." Casting that net out. A few more years dragging souls in. A few more years dragging souls in. And then when he had com completed his work, at the age of 94, he fell asleep in the Lord. It doesn't matter whether we die martyrs or not. All that matters is that we do the work of God. And that we carry him wherever we go. 
And we recognize our church must be incarnational. And so the church, the faith must be everywhere, but it must be especially in its priests. God still says, show yourself to the priests. He still says that even now. And so many priests have walked away from God. We've got to pray for the priests to return to God, to return to the true faith, to return to the practice of that faith, and to carry Christ to souls as St. Titus did, as the true disciple of St. Paul, and let the faith be truly in our flesh and passed on our feet to every soul. And let there be that bring into the peace of Christ into the homes, the kingdom of God, into every place we go. And his kingdom does not have an end. His kingdom is forever. And the kingdom of Satan shall be defeated. And let's make sure that we are the carriers of the victorious kingdom of Christ in all times, including these challenging times in which we find ourselves now. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.